Today, guys, we're going to talk with Ben Simon, get to know his journey and some of his advice for all those guitar players out there. Coming up! Hey everyone, my name is James Martin, welcome to Magic Cut Media and Promotion. And today, we're going to talk with the amazing Benjamin Simon here on how he got started. Thank you so much, Ben, for joining. Thank you for having me. So, where did it all begin? Uh, well, I did five years of piano uh, before I even touched a guitar. But I, I started uh, guitar pretty early on in my youth. Picked it up pretty quickly. I, I, I tell people that I, I'm not good at a lot of things, um, but I'm really good at music, <laughs> you know, which is why I suck at everything else, right? <laughs> so I picked up guitar pretty early on and then started teaching when I was about 13 or 14 years old, where I was charging like $8 per half hour. So you're getting what you paid for, but you know, it was mm -hmm. a good way for me to, I, I always knew I wanted to be a teacher in, in, in some capacity. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't know yet if it was gonna be a high school teacher, a music teacher or an elementary school teacher, I, I just knew that I needed to teach. Um, so uh, when I was about 13, 14 years old, that's when I started trying out what it was like to teach an instrument. So. Mm -hmm. And when you were teaching, was were you just teaching piano or just teaching guitar? Uh, just teaching guitar. Bounced back and forth about whether I ever wanted to teach piano, but still to this day, like piano was fun. I credit a lot of my musicality to my early years in piano. Uh, but I never fell in love with the instrument where like as soon as I picked up the guitar I was like oh this is what it feels like mm -hmm. you know like it was instantaneous like I fell in love with it immediately I knew I and I know that I can't justify teaching something that I don't love yep. you know how do you instill passion into somebody uh, regarding an instrument that you're not even passionate about mm -hmm. right so that's why we have piano teachers because they're passionate about uh, teaching piano I'll, I'll stick to guitar because uh, um, you know, drums are a really close second to me. Uh, drums are something that I, I do kind of off to the side and maybe that's something that I bring into the fold down the road. I have to get better as a drummer uh, mm -hmm. to feel fully confident about that. But guitar was like one of those things that I, I picked up instantly. I was like, oh yeah, I'll be playing this the rest of my life, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and I still feel that way. So at one point did you decide that, okay, you enjoy the guitar and now you want to make it more of your career? Well, when I hit that kind of grade 9, grade 10 uh, age, and I, not a lot of us had jobs, and I wanted to buy more guitars, and I wanted to get more involved with music, and I just didn't have the money for it. So it was figuring out, okay, how do I get somewhat of an income? Because I don't even think at like 13 or 14, you're even allowed to work, because I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure they're not allowed to hire you, because I think you're underage. So this was a way of me kind of skirting that a little bit and going, okay, now I have an income and now I can pursue things that um, I actually uh, want to do and mm -hmm. are, am able to you know, learn how to run a business a little bit at a young age. So first of all, it was fun. Second of all, I, I needed the experience. I, I know and I knew at the time that teaching is competitive. So you need to build your resume uh, as soon as you possibly can. I got involved in a lot of charity work when I was younger. I did a uh, lemonade stand that went pretty big. I did it over five years. Oh. And we, yeah, we ended up raising like just over like $20,000. Wow. Like it, was, it was huge. And, and so I had done the charity stuff and you know, still passionate about charity. I'm actually going skydiving in a couple of weeks nice. uh, for charity, which I'm really excited about. So charity has always been a big thing, but it was like, are you qualified to teach? I, I didn't know whether it was going to be elementary, high school, or music teacher. So I just thought teaching in any capacity is going to start looking good on a resume. So mm -hmm. I really got into it just to start building kind of the early phases of, yes, I am experienced. You know, I knew that it wasn't going to get me a teaching job. Like you're not going to show up in elementary school and be like, I taught guitar when I was 13, therefore hire me. You know, but mm -hmm. it was, you know, teaching guitar got me into being a tutor in the classroom, which got me into uh, being a camp counselor for York Region District School Board. Right, so mm. each, you know, which helped me get, uh, when I was at Trent University, get in uh, for um, uh, concurrent education, mm -hmm. right? So like each thing kind of led to another. I just maintained teaching guitar throughout that time. Yeah. Right, but I think at first it was a stepping stone to lead me to other teaching opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. because at the time nobody was hiring. Mm -hmm. Right, they're not going to look at a 13 year old go, yeah, you're hired. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do it myself. Yep. You know, and, and kind of go from there. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably why I got started. It was just to use it as a stepping stone into leveraging myself into more qualified fields. Do that next time, guys. If no one's going to hire you, start your own business. Yes. 
you started your own kind of performance career. I shouldn't say performance, but you started your own brand as Ben Simon, the performer. You started publishing your music on YouTube and iTunes right. and whatnot. So what made you want to start doing that? Probably the fact that I started teaching so young. I was constantly getting my students to be better and pursuing, you know, what they were interested in. And I, I think I got to a point where I was starting to feel like, I need to do that too. You know, I, I can't tell my students to songwrite if I haven't really written any songs. Yeah. So I, I, I think a lot, you know, about the world around me and the stuff that's happening uh, through the events that have happened uh, in my life or whatever. So it was a form of therapy for me as well. So it was, I was able to talk to my instrument without the people around me judging me. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I think, but I, I think what got me into, uh, I wouldn't say like the performance because I haven't really had the opportunity to perform live my, my own kind of original stuff. But what got me into writing my stuff was that I had all of these feelings and these statements that I wanted to make and couldn't figure out how to make them. And I've always been, I think I just kind of have a creative gene. You know, where mm -hmm. like I picked up the guitar and really just wanted to start writing. I wasn't writing full on songs, so I was writing one riff at a time. Then I got into teaching, and after teaching, that's when I really got into songwriting as a whole. But I, th I think for me, it was just a way for me to express myself because I can't paint, I can't draw. I I'm not, uh, you know, I, I do karate and I try and stay physically fit, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm not your go-to athlete you know I certainly wasn't chosen first on sports teams you know so I had to have some outlet for me to be able to express myself and music was just that facet that I chose mm -hmm. yeah, so. well I mean it was good that you did that because I mean if we didn't have painting we didn't have your songs right yeah because right. when I first started it was okay I'm gonna write these songs for myself you know, and I still write the songs for myself, but now I publish them. But, there were, you know, after my dad passed away, it was like that was the catalyst towards okay, I, I need something to focus my energy on because where it's being focused on right now isn't healthy. So I'm going to focus my energy on creating and I'm going to publish this. So I'm, I'm going to work in a studio and I'm going to do this right, you know, mm -hmm. and after that and having so much fun doing that and feeling so healthy about myself, mentally healthy about myself mm -hmm. afterwards, that I had taken on a project just like a woodworker, you know, starts like building a rocking chair and then after it, it's done and you can work on something else, mm -hmm. right? When I released individual songs kind of by myself, it was like there was no end goal where when you work in the realm of writing an album, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna write an album and then it's done. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna write another album, but it's gonna be different. You said that when you released singles, it wasn't as, I guess, fulfilling yeah, as because Yeah, because it was so much smaller, right? right. So I, I don't think I got like the health benefits out of it as much, right? Where when you write nine songs that are to be released together, you kind of get to stick with the theme. At least that's the way that I look at music. Like I, I don't listen to my iPod on shuffle ever. Like if I'm driving, I will pick a band and that is the band that uh, I will listen to. Like I'll pick an album and that's what I'll listen to from front to start. Cause I, I feel that you know mm -hmm. the song placements, th those are purposeful choices mm -hmm. of, okay, where did they put this song in the album? Why did they put it there? And so me finally doing that able to I was able to organize my thoughts a little bit more rather than releasing sporadic songs every six months. Yeah. You know, I was able to say, okay, here's my, maybe it wasn't a cohesive message from song one to song whatever, but it was a cohesive composition yep. as a whole. And I was like, okay, here's me between, it would have been 2014 that I released okay. it in. Here is my mentality from October of 2013 until October of 2014. Here are my thoughts. Right? And being able to release that was relieving. You know, it was like taking a huge weight off my shoulders. Like, oh, I'm done. You know, and now I can do something else. Mm -hmm. right? University, when I graduated, right. my first year, because when I, when I did this job as a, like a high school student, you know, I was teaching 20 students a week. Right, so it was manageable where when I started in May of the year that I graduated, 
Like I had 25 students right off the bat, which was great. Mm. Uh, and I built up my numbers and I'm currently at like 65 or 67 students wow. a week. So, you know, but as I was building up, I wasn't adjusting. Mm -hmm. I wasn't adjusting my day. I wasn't adjusting. I was just taking on more students without really thinking about when are you going to eat? I got back into karate to help me keep my, my um, physical body fit because yep. uh, I sit in this chair for really long amounts of time. So, you know, I took a break over Christmas break and then I didn't take another break until Christmas break the next year. And I was wiped, wiped. Uh, and I got to a point where I was like almost dreading seeing some students, which I had never been in that position before. And then I realized that it was just because I had overworked myself. Yep. So it was just, the next year was just, uh, which is kind of this year that I'm going into, is just, okay, you're gonna take a break in, you know, in April I went with my fiance to Costa Rica. But I got about three days into my vacation and was like, I can't wait to start teaching again. Yeah. You know, I started missing my students again, which is all I needed. You know, it's not like I need to take 20 days off. I, I need about three days to mm -hmm. get back into, I miss my students. So that's why I now work six days a week, right? I don't work on Sundays. I try not to work on Sundays, just so I can have that 24 hours just to go, Yep. You know, write my lesson plans, do all that kind of stuff, learn the songs that I need to learn, do the stuff that I need to do for me. And then the next day it's like, how was your week? You know, yep. and, and start again. So I found myself not being authentic my first year by the end of it because I was just overworked. Mm -hmm. That I felt like I had to pretend where my second year I was like, okay, I can be excited again because I've planned this out a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You know, love what you do and be authentic. Right? If you're not either of those, I don't think you're going to succeed. And if you do succeed, I don't think you're going to have fun. No, yeah. Right, because there's lots of people who are um, who are successful and maybe don't love what they do. But life's too short to yep. kind of waste away doing something you're not passionate about. I'd rather take a mm -hmm. pay hit and do something that I can thrive on daily, mm -hmm. you know? So be authentic and do what you love. Live a life without regrets, guys. Yeah. So listen, thank you so much, Ben, for being a part of this amazing interview. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to link up all of his social media and websites and his iTunes page and all that down in the description so you can check out his music. He's got some great songs out there. Please consider subscribing to his YouTube channel and please consider subscribing down to Match Cut Media Promotion if you think you got some value out of this because we're constantly doing more interviews and posting more videos. Till then, enjoy yourself, guys. Mm -hmm.